Joey Janelle, Darby Allen, TNT title. Darby Allen retained the title. I thought it was a really good match. They didn't do anything. There was like no moment where I thought somebody was going to die in this match. So totally unlike what everybody was expecting. All inside the ring outside of two dives. I thought it was pretty good. Although poor Darby actually got killed in an angle later. We had a John Moxley promo. Forbidden door, everybody. No one wants to listen to me, but I've been trying to tell you this. They announced that Moxley is going to defend against Kenta, but not for one second did they tell you where you could watch it. They merely threw out a date. So, that's that. We could talk more about that later. Then we had the angle, which we must go into more detail after a while, where Sammy and MJF are having a meeting in a room with a cameraman because they acknowledge the cameraman's allowed into the room. MJF apparently, I guess we'll see where this goes, he's trying to record Sammy saying that he hates Chris Jericho and wants to take over the inner circle. Sammy discovers he's being recorded. He throws the phone against the wall. He punches MJF, and he later quits the inner circle. Of course, the storyline should be that, well, Jericho can just watch the show and find out what really happened. And on Twitter, Jericho has acknowledged that he has seen it. So I guess next week, MJF is going to have to come up with something to explain what was really happening and basically claim that I didn't do anything. I wasn't actually trying to record the guy. He's just paranoid and insane. Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson beat Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi when Lee Johnson got his first ever win in AEW. I thought Lee Johnson looked really good in this match. He has signed a contract. Unfortunately, Cesar Bononi, I think this is what happened. I was told that when Cesar gave Cody the overhead SOS slam, I think it's called, Cody landed on the side of his shoulder, suffered a minor rotator cuff tear, it is believed that he will be fine for the match with Shaq, but he did get injured, and I guess we'll follow up on that. Young Bucks did a promo setting up a tag title match for next week. I have no idea what's going on with this story. This is the most nonsensical storyline maybe that AEW has ever done. Should I go over it now? Try to explain this? Sure. So what happened was, they announced... That Chris Jericho and MJF want to wrestle for the tag team titles. But everyone else in the inner circle wants to wrestle for the tag titles as well. So Jericho says, all right, we're going to have a three-way. And whoever wins, they will be the inner circle representative for the tag titles. Okay. So they do the three-way and Jericho and MJF win. So now the story is, those are the two that are going to be going for the titles. Then they randomly announce that there is now going to be a tag team battle royal where the winners get the Young Bucks at the Revolution pay-per-view. Okay. Well, then they announce that all of the inner circle teams are in the match. Well, that's weird. Okay. So the story is that the winner of that match gets the tag title shot at Revolution. But if the Young Bucks win, they get to choose who they will defend the tag titles against. So the Young Bucks get eliminated, and Jericho and MGF win again. Okay, so now it's Jericho and MGF versus the Young Bucks at a revolution. So then on the show last night, the Young Bucks are yelling at the Good Brothers because the Good Brothers eliminated them from the Battle Royal. The story was, if the Young Bucks won, they were going to choose to defend the titles against Gallows and Anderson. Okay, well, they got eliminated. So on the show last night, they're telling the, the, the Good Brothers, why did you guys eliminate us? If we would have won, we would have chosen you to defend the tag titles against. Well, the Good Brothers say, well, we didn't mean to. It was an accident. You should be mad at Santana and Ortiz because they are who eliminated you. So Matt gets all angry. He says, damn it, you're right. Well, next week... I want Santana and Ortiz in a tag title match. So first off, Santana and Ortiz have failed two times to qualify for a tag title match. The Young Bucks then just choose them for a tag title match next week, which not only makes this whole thing with the inner circle like not make any sense, but on top of that... 
why didn't they just choose the Good Brothers if that's what they've wanted the whole time? I have no idea what's going on. I'm baffled. But long story short, next week they are now challenging Santana and Ortiz. And then at the pay-per-view, they're challenging Jericho and MJF. And for some reason, they can't just choose the Good Brothers. I'm lost. But anyway, that's that story. Matt is with the hangman. Matt wants the hangman to sign with him. Matt gets him drunk, and he does the diabolical thing of pretending you're drinking. I hate that. So he gives him the contract when hangman is good and drunk. Hangman then switches out the papers, signs a different set of papers, which now Matt Hardy signs. So maybe the storyline now is that Matt has signed... With the hangman, and now he must give hangman 30%. I guess we'll see where this goes. But it was subtle. By the way, they also did a subtle deal where when Lee Johnson won, he thanked everybody except QT Marshall, who's upset about it now because he helped train this guy. We had Pac beating Ryan Nemeth. We had a wedding recap. Apparently, the feud just continues. That's what I got out of that. Mm. We have Jericho and MJF beating the acclaimed when Jericho hit the Judas effect. At which point, Sammy quit. We had Tony interviewing Sting, and somehow, poor Darby gets kidnapped and gets dragged around in the parking lot in a body bag. That doesn't sound good. We have a segment with Kenny Omega on the golf course. He's cheating at golf. Thunder Rosa beat Layla Hirsch in the tournament. Jungle Boy does an interview, and remember when Marco Stunt was kidnapped? Apparently, they just let him go. He's been found. So, Jungle Boy still wants to beat up uh, Dax Harwood. And then the main event was Moxley and Archer versus Kenta and Omega in a lights out match. They just had a wild, crazy brawl all over the building. I much enjoyed it. I was baffled that at the end of the match, Omega pinned Archer. I thought for sure that Moxley would pin Omega because we need a main event for the Revolution pay per view. But we're still a month away, so I guess they're doing a slow build for that one. And that was the Dynamite show. NXT show should take five seconds. MSK beat Legato Del Fantasma. Zia Lee beat Cora Jade. And Zia Lee is, is doing this weird thing with Caden and Casey where they want to bring her back to the light. I mean, has she not been in the light? It's weird. I don't know what's going on. We've got the Gargano clan. This was like the AEW tag team scenario. We have 8 million goofy things. We got comedy. We got wheelchairs. We got arms and slings. We got Regal demanding that Austin Theory defend the title tonight for Johnny against Kushida, which then doesn't happen. And then, at the end of the day, Johnny Gargano is fine, and now he's a fighting champion ready to face Kushida. That one's over my head. Ember and Shotzi beat Candice and Indy, so they're in the finals of the Dusty Classic we set up Santos Escobar and uh, Karrion Cross for next week. And Cameron Grimes, this I'll need some time for. Long story short, everybody. In real life, Cameron Grimes bought AMC during the GameStop deal at some ridiculously low price, like $13. And then he sold it for like hundreds of dollars. So legitimately, Cameron Grimes made a ton of money that week. He does not have more money than Elon Musk. He may have more money than anyone in NXT at the moment. And so now that's his character. And it's the greatest. He's His character is now, he's the richest guy in NXT. He's the million dollar man. The million dollar caveman. And he's going to be throwing his money around. I'm sure until he just spends all of his money and then he's poor again. But I cannot wait to see this one play out. And then Chomp and Thatcher lost to Grizzled Young Vets. That's your AEW and NXT report. We'll, think, we'll hear what Mike has to say after the break. Apparently, Mike thinks he's going to get fired today. This I got to hear. Back in a moment, Observer Live. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.